Well, for a long time, Kelly and I have talked about whether or not we should have chickens out at my folks' place. And Dad was always sort of resistant to that. I don't think he's a fan of chickens, but the situation has changed. My mom passed away a couple years ago, and Kelly and I are out here taking care of Dad now. And I think that he is not as involved with what goes on outside of the house, and maybe he has sort of decided that some things are just not worth having an opinion about, perhaps. So as Kelly and I have been sort of settling in out here and making the changes that seem to us appropriate, sort of upgrading the garden and interacting with our grandkids here instead of at our place in town, the moment came when chickens suddenly had moved up the ladder a little bit and had become something that was worthwhile to enough people to be worth making some changes to accommodate. Now change is something that comes, you know, at least I've noticed change in my life. Some of it's controlled and some of it is not controlled and of the two I have had a lot more satisfaction in the changes that I was able to control a little bit. So as I was thinking about where would I find the space in my shop and in my life for chickens and for making a chicken coop and how exactly would this fit into the resources that were available? I realized that it was time to close the door on a couple of chapters in my life and perhaps open up some opportunities for some better things. You see those pieces of plywood stacked up, those are form plywood. And I'm done with concrete, or at least as something that I take very often. Concrete's a younger man's game, and maybe I'm gradually being compelled to find the wisdom to recognize I'm not a younger man anymore. So concrete as a specialty's done. And those tires with the wheels in place, those are a set of studded snow tires for a car that we're just about to sell and there are tires from pickups that my dad had and there's a lot of stuff in this space that no longer serves the purpose and has gradually become evidence of hoarding instead of evidence of preparation. I don't know if I'm getting smarter in my ability to recognize that subtle distinction but as I get older, I realize that the hoarding impulse needs to be suppressed when I can. Sometimes it's hard to be self-aware enough to realize when a time is past and when circumstances have changed and that now it's time to adapt.
It's incredible how costs associated with construction, even little construction projects like this one, can just get out of hand in a hurry. And so as I was trying to figure out how to squeeze chickens into my life and into my shop and into my budget, I was looking for opportunities to use some of the material that I'd been hanging on to for a long time, repurposing some stuff, pulling some pieces that had been misordered from the spec house project into the equation and committing some form plywood to a use for which it was never intended and finally realizing that saving some old T111 siding from previous remodels had been a pretty good move after all. And it's interesting, as a contractor you never, never, never are able to use repurposed material because people are paying for a new product. But there's a kind of satisfaction, isn't there, in taking something that is just right on the edge of being junk and turning it into something that's right on the edge of being worthwhile. I had a chance to use a door that I'd been hanging on to for, I think, maybe six or seven years. This door came from Judy Vianne. Judy Vianne is the widow of Bill Vianne, who gave me the blacksmithing tools 15 years ago. I had the chance, thankfully, seven or eight years after Bill died, to go out and remodel his house for Judy. And this door came out of the space between her kitchen and her garage. Their Chesapeake retriever, Chester, had scratched a big problem in it. He was big enough to scratch any part of that door he wanted to reach, and sure enough, he dug a hole. But I just couldn't bring myself to throw it away. And now it's going to provide a little security and a little more light for the chickens. After putting off chickens for a long time, there came a moment when it was clear that enough people were interested in chickens that building a chicken coop and a chicken run really had very little to do with chickens and a whole bunch to do with providing an opportunity for my people to interact with each other. Grandkids are going to love this chicken coop and this run. It needs to be big enough not only to house the chickens and keep out the monsters, but give the grandkids a little place to go in and get acquainted with you know everything associated with chickens and taking care of animals and getting a little bit dirty in a way that you just can't get dirty in any environment except with livestock and maybe build their immune system a little bit I mean small doses of E. coli in your childhood fortify an immune system for the rest of your life at least I believe so we'll just see how this works out but can't be bad to have eggs, right? As I watch myself building this, it just seems like a validation of the idea that when you're building something, there's always a way to do it by yourself. And even if it's not the most effective way to get something built, 
you know, with one man working by himself. It's the most efficient way. In terms of man hours, in most cases, there's no more efficient way than a small crew. And even though there are occasionally things that just cannot be done entirely by yourself, there's just not very many of them, particularly with a nail gun, particularly with a skill saw, particularly with a little determination and a little arm strength. There's almost always a way to make things happen, which introduces the whole notion that almost every really worthwhile thing that's ever been done was not done by a committee but rather by one motivated individual who just would not take no for an answer. It took me quite a while actually to make this little project happen because the design of this seemed to me to be important. How is this going to fit into the space? How big and how do I deal with slopes and how do I deal with the roof water and what would it be that would work over time? Not a lot of time, because this chicken coop is not a permanent thing, right? And so it doesn't have to be perfect, but it still has to be square, plumb, and true. It doesn't have to be overbuilt. In fact, it can be underbuilt. The chickens won't care. It'll still keep the raccoons out. Thanks for watching, Essential Craftsman. And keep up the good work. to get to him. This way. Okay. Yeah, Daddy. Help me out. I'm a little bit nervous to go in there. I know, but what if they're... Uh... Yeah, yeah. Get her, her tail. Do you with the glasses going through? Hi. Hey, we laid an egg! What?